There are two simultaneous races going on in Formula E. There's the obvious one with the cars out on the track, but there's also a constant battle going on against temperature. Why is temperature so critical and how can combating it benefit not just the cars out on the track, but you and I out in the wider world too? One of the biggest issues that Formula E teams have to deal with when running these cars on these street circuits is the generation of heat. And I'm here at the Renault garage with this very clever piece of kit, a FLIR infrared camera, which is going to show us exactly where around the car that heat's being generated. One of the first things that the guys here in the garage, the mechanics, have to do when the car comes in for a session is try and cool the battery back down again because it's very hot having just been out on the racetrack. The battery needs to be within a certain temperature range to enable it to charge as well as to enable it to work properly out on the racetrack. So their big mission now, having just come in from the end of a session, is to get that battery cooled down to its optimum temperature so they can get it charged back up again ready for the next session. So we're now looking at the battery on the back of Sebastian Buemi's car and you can see that it's a real hot spot of the car with so much heat being generated that the guys now are desperately trying to cool it down of course and if I swing the camera around this is the side pod of the car where the guys have just put all that dry ice into these cooling fans and what's really nice on this image is you can see the dry ice is in this green section here which shows it's very cold. The fans are blowing backwards through the side pod through the car's radiator and you can see on the image how the cold, lower temperatures are spreading right the way down the side of the car, off in towards the battery, which are doing exactly what they need to do, cool that thing down back into its operating temperature window again. So Vincent, tell me about the, the heat that's generated on these Formula E cars. Where does it come from? The main source are the, still the losses in the motor due to the electromagnetic uh, flux, which create uh, uh, some uh, temperature. The battery is another source because the work to load and uh, discharge the cells, create some losses and temperature. The last one which is well known is the brakes. As you can see, difference between a thermal engine which got a lot of friction on piston, on connected road, on crankshaft, doesn't exist on an electrical car. The biggest limitation is the maximum temperature that the cell can accept, which is uh, very low compared to a, a standard mechanical system. When we've got a normal oil or water system, we're talking about 100 or 20 degrees. Cell, we're talking more a range of 60, 70 degrees. We know that, for example, a, a thermal engine is around 37% of efficiency for the best, best engine, where we're talking about 95% for an electrical motor. If more regen effectively means more temperature in the battery, how does that affect you as a driver? How do you particularly manage that? Uh, that's a big topic, especially this year, because last year with the 100 kilowatt of regen, the temperature of the battery was never really an issue. So it meant we could drive it to the limit, regen as much as we wanted. And towards the end of the race, we were reaching more or less the maximum, but we didn't have to manage it. This year, with 150 kilowatt of regen, we, we can obviously, we heat up the battery a lot more. And the problem is, Above a certain temperature, which I believe is around 55, 56 degrees, you start to lose the power of the regen. So you cannot regen anymore at 150 kilowatt. We try to have a simulation that will tell, according to the air temperature, how the temperature of the battery is going to raise. And according to this, we try to prevent the fact that the battery is going to go up. Because around 63 degrees, the car will stop. That's not a message you want to receive. No, you, you don't want to receive that. So after a few laps, the engineer is going to tell you whether you are on target, whether you have more margin or not. And according to this, you can increase or decrease the region. That's down to your strategy then. On est sûr d'être bon avec la batterie. On est en target, pas de souci. On a 0 8 de marche par rapport au panneau. On aurait terminé à 58 de santé batterie. Are there any races where temperatures really had an impact on, on the end result for you in a race? In season two in Putrajaya, we had a big problem with the car stopped. Sebastian Buemi is slowing, the race leader, and has he run into problems for the Renault team? It was the first time that the temperature was so high and we didn't really know how to deal with it. So yeah, we obviously paid the big price. So I noticed that whenever the cars finish a run or come in from a session, one of the very first things that happens is the mechanics put fans and dry ice even inside the side pods. What's the specific reason for that? So as 
all single seater racing car. We do not have any fan, anything less in the, like that in the cooling system. So we have to cool down the whole system and for that we use dry ice to make sure that every time we restart the car we are at the lower end of the operating temperature of the cell to give us the maximum efficiency and range to do all the tests we have to do. And in terms of the cooling, the system, because you have radiators a little bit like a traditional racing car in the side of the car, don't you? So that water in that radiator is cooled by the air flowing over the, the car yeah. and then the water is then fed back what, into the battery box itself? Yeah, so we've got two, two different systems. One which is dedicated to the motor and the inverter, which will work with water. And we've got another system which is dedicated to the battery, which is a, a specific liquid for safety reason. Once the electrolytes cooled in the radiators, it heads into the battery box where a network of pipes cools every one of the 150 plus cells individually. So the temperature is critical, but both in terms of being too hot, also presumably in terms of being too cold. On low temperature, it's easier to control, but you still have to manage. So make sure that all you're uh, reducing your cooling capability by masking, blanking, a cooler, reducing flow to make sure you're always to the minimum operating temperature around 25, 27 degrees. So extreme cold can be an issue too, and some batteries are designed to divert some of their own energy into heating themselves up to get into that crucial temperature window. Those principles apply as much to your standard road EV as they do the high performance Formula E cars. So that's a huge challenge for car manufacturers because they need to sell the same models of their vehicles in the extreme heat of places like the Middle East as they do in the extreme cold of Scandinavia. And these environmental factors can make a big difference with cars using up to 40% more energy in extreme temperatures as the system either cools or warms the battery accordingly. So it's now become a different kind of problem for the automotive industry because the internal combustion engine was so inefficient that heat loss from burning petrol actually warmed the engine up all by itself so they never really had to worry about it being too cold. On the other hand, they don't want it to get too hot, so some cars now have electric fans that kick in whilst the vehicle's on charge to prevent it from overheating. It's interesting to note that the teams are fighting another battle behind the scenes in managing temperatures, as well as the battle that we're all watching on the racetrack, because the difference between getting that right and wrong can literally be the difference between winning a race or not finishing at all. The laws of nature might be pretty hard to beat, but with the right technology and the right cooling systems, the teams have found ways to keep that under control. And that learning that we found here in Formula E will feed directly into the road car industry, meaning that cars that you and I will be driving in the future will be able to go faster and longer, far more efficiently as a result.